I am standing in front of a brand new Volkswagen Atlas 3.6 liter BR6 four motion crossbore. And why am I holding the original suspension? Well, we're gonna see just how much fun we can have with this car. I wanna take just a moment to thank our wonderful sponsors for today's adverts, Solarwork Suspension, who are part of the KW Group. Based in California, they are your go-to for street performance coilovers. Thank you so much to them for making this video possible. Link in the description below. And now, let's slam an Atlas Crossport. Taking a brand new car and just slamming it. That's pretty much the gist of it. But today is Sunday. Next Saturday, there is an event at the Volkswagen headquarters that I would like to drive this to. And then the very next day, I would like to try and drive this car 7,000 miles via a racetrack in California. All right, seems a little intimidating when I say it like that. So the plan is slam it. You may have seen when I lowered an Atlas R-Line last year, which turned into being a wonderful, wonderful car. But on this one, I'm gonna try and go as extreme as I can, essentially. Which leads into, I wanna try and drive this little brand new Atlas Crossboard 7,000 miles. I wanna go over mountains. I wanna go through deserts. I am going to try and camp solo in the snow and in Death Valley. <laughs> This is getting sillier and sillier. So um, yeah, join us while we just go extreme with an Atlas Cross Sport. So you've asked for me to be a little bit more hands-on with the builds. Well, you're gonna be following along during this one. But first, let's start with the Cross Sport. Where is a Cross Sport? If you are watching in Germany, um, guten Tag, uh, danke für kommen. Um, in Brazil, hola, um, in, in no entendo Portuguese. The Atlas is essentially the biggest car possible to be built on the MQB platform. MQ being the modular chassis that underpins the Golf, the Jetta, the European Passat, the Tiguan, the list goes on. The seven-seater Atlas is the biggest one possible on that platform. But now we have the Atlas Crossport, which has a slightly more sloped back and it's only a five-seater instead of the seven-seater. So yeah, it's a little bit shorter, it's a little bit sportier, and well, we're gonna test just how much cross and just how much sport we can make this thing do. It does have the 3.6 liter VR6 engine, that beautiful, beautiful Vura engine that my City Golf Mark I has, but because it is MQB, and spoiler, I already know the suspension fits, so we started putting this in already, but I think we can get a seven inch drop out of this car and by going back through the parts bin in the back, I have this very lightly used set of eight piston calipers with 360 mil rotors, which were previously fitted on a Golf R that I think might bow up, I hope. But you will find out in just a moment. I just also want to show one quick thing here. Look, twin caliper MQB brakes. So if you have a Mark VII performance pack or you have a Golf R or whatever, this could be a nice upgrade from your single to dual piston calipers. I haven't really seen anyone talk about this. So go forth and share the nerdiness on that. Inside the engine bay, yep, 3.6 liters. So we'll probably don't even have time to really go too far into this. I'm certainly not adding a turbo or anything in uh, four days. Let's just see, see what I can do. And I'm not joking. I, I wanna sleep on top of this car in Death Valley. Yep, right, suspension. First things first, well, we've got to slam it. This is actually the same exact suspension we had on the full-size Atlas last time. So I know it's gonna bolt up. This is the ST, STX, so dampening, dampen, dampening, damping, damping adjustable. So we can change the uh, dampening rate. Dampening, dampen, dampen rate. You know what, it's adjustable suspension. It is coilovers. However, last time when it was on the white seven seater, it was all the way up. So we're gonna go all the way down on this one and let's just see how that's gonna work. How do you do this? Well, there's a single bolt there, you undo that. And then, so this is the special tool for spreading these struts. So all you do very simply is put that in the back, turn it a little bit and the strut will go in and out. However, the easiest way, take off the axle bolt. There's three nuts for the ball joint remove the whole thing, then it can swing out the way, put it back in. There's plenty of how-tos, let's just keep going. But there's a top tip. When your suspension arrives, it's gonna be laying flat on its side, so you have to prime it. Take your strut and just push it up and down like five times, 
and just get all the oil in the correct place before you mount it. Otherwise, it's gonna ride like crap until it settles itself properly the slow way. We don't have the original strut mount. It does have the camber adjusting plate up top. So we're gonna put that in with stock camber for right now. We might have to change that a little bit later, but you'll see why. I'm talking 22 by 10 inch ET20 wheel, by the way. Suspension is now in. We have set it eight threads from the bottom, just on both sides, just to get it started. The camber adjustment is set to neutral right now. We've primed the suspension. Everything is torqued underneath here. So ball joint is torqued. The one bolt in the suspension is torqued. Axle nut is tight, but not torqued yet because we're gonna go over here and so that I don't forget, push out the center cap on the wheel and then lower it on the wheel, then torque that center nut. So that's an easy way to do it safely. Ah, yeah, the three bolts up top, we still have to torque those. They're hand tight right now, but be very careful tightening those. The torque setting I will put in the comments below, you can strip those threads. And if you do, they're a pain in the ass to fix. On the ST, they're much easier, but on the OEM housings, the nut underneath is a captive nut and too much torque will bust it and you're gonna have to like fight it out. Get a nice torque wrench, get a cheap torque wrench, doesn't matter, just get a torque wrench and use it on these bolts. For now though, let's lower it down, get this on and see if it can even move with it set this low. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to put some wood underneath these wheels because it's gonna be too low to get off the lift. But let's just try slamming it down off the lift and see if it'll even come off. <laughs> so we have to clap for the audio to sync, but might be time for some uh, cleaner gloves. So we're, oh, all four wheels are back on, the stock wheels. Um, that's all we have for now. We're gonna lower it, but I think it might be so low that the lift won't be able to uh, come out from it. So let's see what happens. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right, this one comes out. Nope. It is so low that we are sitting on the lift, which is the same problem I have on my ultra slam cars. So we need to get a jack out. Oh my God. <laughs> we are like, not just tucking tire. Oh my, look at the front. Oh my, we're talking like two and a half inches of tire on the front. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's fix this. Oh wait, by fix this, I mean, let's just put wood underneath the wheels. Oh, this seems like a really good time to say this. Today's video is sponsored by multiple different parties. However, let's just do a disclaimer. Slamming your car is probably going to invalidate some warranties. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's my best Halloween laugh. That's my best evil villain laugh. Oh my God. Ralph, you want to come around this side with a light? Show that rear end. Oh my gosh. We, we might have a problem. <laughs> we might be sitting on the tire. For right now, let's, uh, let's torque down those bolts and then let's see if we can drive. This thing is so low and it's sitting on four inches of wooden risers. Look at the bag that's not on the risers. <laughs> okay. Well, if you're tuning in, I hope this is what you uh, hope for. Let's go drive in the rain and, and see if it can move. I honestly don't know. Ralph, yay or nay? <laughs> oh my gosh. So there's no way it's going to move with the fender liner how it is. So we're gonna, I keep saying we. Um, Ralph, camera guy and I with the tools and the nonsense are going to, uh, yeah, remove the fender liner and maybe trim it a little bit. And then hopefully that will be enough. Okay, fender liner's out. Let's see if, uh, if it'll move. Oh my, it went lower. It went even lower. Oh my gosh. 
Um, okay, yeah, let's, let's just go drive it. It's completely fine. Completely fine. Uh, give me just a moment. I have to torque the wheel bolts. Uh, that is 120 newton meters, 88 foot pounds. Yeah, 120 newton meters, 88 foot pounds of torque. I'll do that. I also have to torque down the front axle bolt, and then we are good to see if this thing can move. Well, it is moving, and it doesn't sound like mm, it's making some noises, but I'm even turning the wheel. No, no, we only get a quarter of a turn of the wheel. <sighs> All right, well, there are other lowered crossbores out there, and as you know, we have already lowered an Atlas, which looks sensational especially lapping the Nürburgring Northlife, but I would say this might be the lowest one, which is a very beautiful car. All we've done is make it dumber and harder to drive though. What were we doing this for again? Oh yeah, fun, yay, okay. However, as you know, just lowering a car doesn't make it cool or individual enough. So we're gonna go ahead and do some low profile tires and wheels that are one and a half inches wider with an offset 15 millimeters lower, so. That's not going to help with the rubbing, but it's going to make it more challenging. So yeah, I think the decision is made. Let's go low pro. Ralph's going to go home, start editing this. I'm going to continue the work on my own. Wheels, tires, maybe some eight piston brakes, some other things to make it nice and fancy. And again, less warranty. -y. Well, the tires arrived and yeah, I've run 285, 35, 22s before, but I have, and I've run 265, 40, 22s, but I didn't realize that 245, 30 was going to be this small. I mean, I wanted it to be small because we've got a lot of clearance issues and I want to go low and it's really, you can't take it off the lift. We're going to have to put wood underneath the wheels. This is the Delente D7. Um, I've run these before on a smaller profile on a 20 before, but that was on a Jetta, which is, you know, smallish, medium-ish size sedan, not an SUV. Delente D7 24530ZR22. <sighs> yeah, that's, that's, I mean, it's got the fitment there. You know, that's what we're looking for, and it's gonna be slightly in, just about like that, and as you can see, the body has to come down further, but the wheel's gonna go up a tiny little bit. It's not quite, centered there. I think it's gonna work. I think we're gonna be okay because this is, this is a lot of fitness. This is a 22 by 10. Yeah, I did have to estimate. I really couldn't find anyone else running this size, this offset on this vehicle this low. I mean, I don't wanna say I'm the first, but mm, yeah, there is a, a bit of an educated guess going on. Whew, this here, let me just, uh, I mean, that's, that's it. If we're like that, just maybe half an inch, half an inch lower. Hey, how about see-through wheels? Well, no, we've got the very nice rotiforms, which are getting mounted up right now and balanced, and then tomorrow in alignment. Um, okay, this video is going off to Ralph. Yeah, he's gonna edit this together. You will see this on Monday. Coming up, this car has to drive three and a half hours in two days time, early in the morning, to the Volkswagen R's and coffee. You will have missed that if you have don't, well, if you don't know about it already. Um, so we'll have a video coming up from that. And then this car at this height, with these brakes, rotiforms, this size, Delente tire, I'm gonna try and drive cross country. 7,000 miles while camping. I wanna camp on top of a mountain. I wanna camp in a desert. I wanna take it on a racetrack in California. I'm gonna socially distance the heck out of it. I'm not going to randomly meet people as much as possible. I'm just going to carry my own food, put a tent on top from Tule, and while camp in this extremely low static vehicle. So stay tuned. You can check it out and follow along on my Instagram link below. Otherwise, thank you again to everyone for their help, support on doing these very fun things. I hope they're fun for you out on the internet. See you next week, next Monday morning. Oh wait, YouTube. Yeah, like, subscribe. Other than that, wash your hands, wash your cars. Goodbye. For now. Goodbye.